This is a simple introduction to creating a navigation using HTML and CSS. It's assuming a base level of knowledge. First, set up a quick project with some default HTML5 and CSS. We have two folders, sorry, files called index.html and styles.css. Over in index.html, within the body tags, we're going to have a nav with an ID of nav1. This is going to be the body of our navigation element. You can give it a class name if you like, instead of an ID, it doesn't really matter too much. Next, we're going to add a logo, so we're going to add a header1 with an ID of nav1-logo and give it a title, any title will do. It's the logo of your website. After that, we are going to want to add an unordered list. This is going to be the links for the page, like home, contact, etc. Make sure you add in all the links that you would like within your navigation. Uh, for the tutorial, we'll just do home, about, shop, and contact. It's typically a good idea to make these links that refer to actual pages so when a user clicks on them you know it'll redirect to an index page or the about page or the shop page or the contact page um, it's entirely up to you we're just following the basic foundation of the navigation for this tutorial If you want it to be a link, but not actually go anywhere, just give it a hashtag. That'll just represent, uh, stay on the current page, but still make it identify as a link. So a clickable object. We're going to give the owner list an idea of nav1-links, so that we can style it later. And we're going to give the homepage link a class name or an ID name of active. This will just allow us to make it bold or colored to show the user what page they're currently on. So for example, if you're on the about.html, you would give the about the active class and not the home page. Next is go to our CSS and uh, reference that navigation element. We're gonna give it a width of 100%. And we're also going to set the position to sticky. This basically means that um, the position will start as relative, and then as the user scrolls down, the position will go to fix, so it will stay at the top of the page. Uh, let's set the height to 80 pixels. It's typically a good height for navigations on uh, desktop. And set the background uh, color to whatever you like. On VS Code, just type in a random uh, hex color code, and then you can use the color panel here to just select whatever, whatever color you want more easily. Since we did a fairly dark blue, we're going to want to set the text color to white so that it stands out. Now you can see there's quite a bit of a white border here. Um, if you're not experienced with CSS, uh, I don't know what to fix this, just add reference body and do margin zero. Basically by default, uh, the body element, which is the main container of all HTML on the page, uh, has a margin. So we're just going to remove that in order to remove the uh, white border that we saw here. So you refreshed it, you can see the sides have now stretched to the full width of the screen. Um, but there's still a white spacing at the top. The reason for this is because the header tag or our logo also has default margin. So let's reference it. It's called nav1-logo. And 
and then just set the margin to zero to remove that additional space. Let's see how that looks. Perfect. No spacing at all now. Um, now we just want to move the uh, well, everything needs to be aligned horizontally rather than stacked on top of it like we see here. Let's go back to the code. Let's give the logo a padding of Actually, let's do line height first. So line height is 60 pixels, uh, which basically means that there's 20 pixels of spacing within the uh, main navigation and the logo itself. So we'll just give a padding of top bottom 10 pixels, top 10 pixels, bottom 10 pixels. So in total, 60% plus 20%, sorry, 60 pixels plus 20 pixels equals to the navigation height of 80 pixels. Um, it's probably easier if we just put that in nav navigation element itself uh, because then we can also specify the horizontal pattern, left and right pattern. We should just do 20 VW which is similar to 20 pixels. Just a bit more consistent with the uh, page itself. Uh, because we didn't specify box size and we can see it kind of going off the page. Uh, it's basically doing width plus padding and height plus padding. We want the padding to be taken out of the width and the height. So as you can see here, the width is way too high and the height is too high as well because of that new padding. So if we do box desalizing, border box, that resolves the issue because it basically does height minus the padding of 20 pixels and width minus the padding of 20 VW, oh sorry, 40 VW in total. And that resolved the issue. You can see our uh, list elements have disappeared. We need them to move over to the right side of the screen, which is actually fairly simple, but newer developers may find this difficult, which is the reason I made this tutorial. So go ahead and add display inline grid. That's going to make an, uh, a grid which we can specify locations for these different elements. So our logo will be on the left side and our list will be on the right side. So let's reference that list. Let's give it a margin of zero just in case. Not much has changed. So go ahead and add justify dash content space between, uh, which is going to add white space between the logo and the navigational links. We didn't actually specify the columns, which is why that didn't work. So just do grid template columns, auto order, which represents two columns. The first column is the logo. The second column is the list. Um, we're going to give them an auto order, which just represents, you know, a dynamic width. They'll set their own widths, so to speak. And back down to the list, we just want to do list on none, remove those bullet points. And uh, because we want to make those list elements horizontal, we'll just do inline flex, which is very similar to the approach we did for inline grid. Um, I just wanted to show a kind of a different way to do it. So if, for this, we need to add flex direction column. Don't need to specify how many columns. We just need to specify uh, the direction that we want it to be. Go ahead and add a little bit of styling to the list itself rather than the uh, parent container. Uh, remove the padding, just with padding dash left zero, there's automatically uh, some default there. And just do disp display inline just because these are single elements. You can see I made a mistake here, I did flex direction column, we actually want to do 
flex direction uh, row. Basically, column represents the y-axis and uh, row represents the x-axis, so horizontal versus vertical. We want it to be horizontal, so we'll use row. Remember for the logo, we did a line height of 60 pixels. The same needs to be done for the list themselves. This will vertically center them. Uh, you can see there's a gap here, so we can quick, no, there's no gap here in between the elements. We can quickly fix this just by typing gap, and then 20 pixels, whatever value you would like it to be. And that adds the spacing um, in between them, but not on the right side, so that it's not kind of offset. Now the equivalent of this with display in line grid is just grid dash gap uh, for future reference if you ever need to use that again. Now let's just quickly change the font size to make it a little bit larger than the default text on the page, just so it can stand out more. As you can see, it's starting to look way, way, way better. Uh, last thing we want to do is set a new class called active and just do font weight bold or whatever styling you want it to be. This just represents the active page. So in this case, we're on index, so the home page is active. If you did the same on about, then you'd want to add the class name to the about uh, list element there. And it basically just a visual cue for the user to show them which page they're on.